I think yeah, there are important issues in the election, obviously, uh, economy, obviously, education, public safety, uh, health care. But the environment, certainly one of the most important, but I think it's probably the most urgent. Uh that was former Congressman Ron DeSantis, the Republican candidate for governor, during a press event out in the Everglades. DeSantis took part in a long-standing Florida tradition for political candidates, the photo op airboat ride and Everglades tour. It is a rite of passage as old as the state itself, but this year it is a little different. DeSantis believes he can appeal to voters as an environmentalist. This was one of the really central issues in the primary that I just won, uh, where I had a candidate who was not willing to really talk about this. Um, I had been willing to take on entrenched interests, you know, like 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 Big Sugar, that you know I represent really the resurgence of maybe a Teddy Roosevelt style uh, Republican Party here in Florida, uh, and I think that that's good for everybody. So. Now, he issued his first policy paper of the campaign, and it was about the environment. It is an issue he plans on hitting with some regularity, especially here in South Florida. So let's look at how the environment may play in this year's election. Joining me this morning is Michael Grunwald, a longtime Florida writer who now works for Political Magazine. He is the author of The Swamp, which I always say, if you've got two books to read on the Everglades, it's Marjorie Soman Douglas's River of Grass and Michael Grunwald's The Swamp. Michael? Thank you very much for coming in. Oh, thanks, Jim. So this notion that that uh, Ron DeSantis, a Republican candidate for governor, can appeal to voters as an environmentalist, it's it's a it's an interesting strategy. You know, we haven't Jeb Bush tried it, uh, Charlie Crist tried it when he was a Republican before becoming a Democrat. How do you think it plays? Well, look, uh, you know, Jeb Bush didn't try it in 1994, and and he was like the only Republican to lose that year. And then he did try it in 1998, and it went. Went a lot better for him. Um, I think Ron DeSantis has uh, has chosen a kind of uh, interesting time to sort of come out of the closet as an environmentalist. He's never really shown in Congress, certainly through his voting record, that he had a lot of interest in green issues. He's actually voted against wetlands protection, and the Everglades is a giant wetland. Um, but now he recognizes that you know, particularly on the east and west coasts of Florida, where you're seeing an ecological meltdown right now, this is something he wants to get on the right side on to try to expand his base beyond just the kind of hardcore Republican Trump vote. He's making the argument that he believes that the environment will be a key issue in this year's election. Do you agree with him on that? Well, I think so. I mean, I think you've got, you know, uh, dolphins and manatees going belly up on the West Coast. You have these incredible fish kills. You have flocculent glop on the, uh, that, you know, that looks like guacamole and, and smells like skunk over on, on the East Coast. I mean, I think uh, there's a sense that 100 years of history is kind of coming due, um, and uh, and also that you know we've had a governor who has essentially been cutting environmental budgets, um, opposing federal environmental rulemakings. Um, yeah, this is this is something that people are going to be upset about because they can see the impact in their backyard. It's interesting you mentioned that. One of the questions he was asked during that press availability was whether or not he would continue Rick Scott's legacy as governor, especially in the area of, of, you know, budget cuts, or would he restore some funding to the Department of Environmental Protection, bring back scientists, maybe enforce more regulations? And this is what he had to say when asked that question. To me, anything's on the table. Um, I'm certainly willing to look at um, updated water quality standards um, if we think that that can, that can make a difference. You know, I'm not somebody that thinks you just throw a lot of red tape and it solves problems, but there are instances where you can do a, a targeted approach uh, that could make a difference. So increased water quality standards. I know that sounds really arcane, but that is that is one of the big fights that has taken place over the last 20 years as to where to place those standards and what's acceptable in the in the river of grass and into our aquifer. Well, I think he's smart to say that anything's on the table. But when he talks about how his his instinct is to be against red tape, I mean red tape he's sort of using there as an as a euphemism for environmental regulation, and he's been pretty consistent, uh, and you know like many House Republicans in Washington and voting against increased regulation, particularly at the federal level, um, of methane, of ozone, and of, as, we, as I mentioned, of, uh, of 
federal wetland protection. So I think uh, you know it's certainly something that he's trying to get green. He's trying to move to the middle on this, but certainly his record doesn't suggest that he's going to be like a, a really intense enviro on these issues. He cites two things. Uh, uh, he cites two things, and one of them I'm fascinated by because he almost makes the argument that Big Sugar hates me. In other words, Big Sugar hates Ron DeSantis. They spent a lot of money against him. They're supporting Adam Putnam, running ads against him. One of the reasons why, again, being you know from that conservative uh, ideology that he has, he opposed price supports for the sugar industry. So the sugar industry has targeted him. He's now converted that into saying, if Big Sugar dislikes me, I must be good for the environment then. Well, I think he's, I would say you've got a, he's made a sort of plausible case that he's better for the environment than, uh, than Adam Putnam, who really was, uh, you know, a Big Sugar was a big Adam Putnam fan and, and not a big Ron DeSantis fan. Um, but he has to make the case that he's better than Andrew Gillum, right? And uh, Andrew Gillum has been pretty aggressive on environmental issues, um, pushing solar in Tallahassee, and particularly on climate change, which is in some sense, you know, one of the, the biggest long-term threat to the Everglades, which is you know, at a type sea level, and if you have a lot of sea level rise, the Everglades is going to is going to be underwater. You already have serious problems with saltwater intrusion, and you have DeSantis who's running around saying, "Look, I'm not a global warming guy," um, not really confirming that he you know that he accepts the science. And Andrew Gillum, who's been very aggressive about pushing for renewable energy and taking climate, which you know the current governor of Florida has you know said that. Bureaucrats in, in his state government can't even talk about climate. Gillum said it's going to be a top priority. Michael Grunwald, it's like you and I are, on, are in a mind meld because <laughs> my other soundbite that I have is I also have Ron DeSantis talking about climate change, talking about whether or not he accepts the science and believes in it. So let's play that sound now. Well, look, the sea rise may be because of human activity and the changing climate. You know, maybe it's not. I don't know. But what I do know is I see the sea rising. I see the increased flooding in South Florida. So I think you'd be a fool not to consider that an issue that we need to address. So I'm a big supporter of, of efforts at resiliency. I think humans, I think we contribute to uh, changes in the environment. I'm just saying, but I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not. A, uh, I'm not in the pews of the church of the global warming leftists. I'm just not. I'm I'm not in the pews of the church. Of the, where is that church? And and uh, what what time do, do they meet early in the morning or is it after football? Well, look, I guess it's probably fair to say I'm in the church. You know, I've got an electric car. I've got solar panels. I wrote a book about the Everglades. Um, and it's fine that not everybody's going to be in the church. I understand that. But when you say he believes in changes in the, that man changes the environment, I mean, of course we change the environment. You dig a hole, you've changed, you've changed the environment. The question is whether you believe the scientists who say, that the burning of fossil fuels are creating this, you know, significant existential problem for life on Earth. And what he's essentially saying there is, well, he's he's not ready to go there, and he's not willing to do anything about it. Which is really the test of, you know, whether you whether you want to call it in the pews of the global warming church or just whether you're willing to take action. Um, you know, saying that saying that man's involved or saying that man affects his environment is just a, a truism. The question is whether you're going to change policy. Uh as you look ahead, what the state needs, whether it's from the next governor or, you know, who we send to the United States Senate between Rick Scott and, and Bill Nelson, what are the pressing issues that you see uh, from an environmental standpoint that the state needs to deal with? Obviously, we are dealing once again with the red tide and the blue-green algae. That There's no quick solution there. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what, the, what are the types of things we need to be hearing from our leaders in terms of what they're going to do? Well, I would say that the two major uh, environmental issues facing Florida right now is, first of all, kind of Everglades restoration, which is related to, to these problems you're seeing in the estuaries. And it comes down to building, building more water storage, which is what Everglades restoration was supposed to be about when it was, uh, when it was started as this $8 billion project 18 years ago. Uh, now it's $16 billion project, and we haven't built any water storage. That is an area where Big Sugar has been sort of, uh, you know, sort of an obstacle to progress. 
there. And, and I'll give I'll give Ron DeSantis credit for this. Whether uh, he did help push through funding because of his relationship to President Bush for the for the storage reservoir in South that hasn't been built yet. The money's still coming through, but th he played a role in that. But is that enough? Well, everybody did, and that's one of the things about the history of the Everglades is that it's been very easy to say I'm for the Everglades, right? Like left wingers like it, right wingers like it, Buffalo wingers like it. Everybody likes the Everglades. The question is sort of, you know, are you going to really step in when it, when it needs, you and know, when, the there's minutia, a controversial, it's, when there's it's, a controversial issue. And it's also, and the, it's the minutia. It's the making sure the Department of Environmental Protection has the funding. I mean, they lost, I can't, scores of scientists left the agency under the Scott administration, bringing back that scientific-based research. Exactly. And that's what I was going to say is the second issue is sort of science and climate. Um, because that really is, you know, it's the future of Florida it depends on, you know, and what, like uh, most of us who particularly live on the coast live at very low elevations. You're already seeing in Miami Beach, you know, the sun will be shining and, uh, and Biscayne Bay will be coming through the storm drains. Um, it's sort of, is the, is the state going to get serious about, about dealing with, uh, with fossil fuels and moving towards renewable energy? And that's something that, that we haven't seen from Republicans in Tallahassee or in Washington. Michael Grunwald, it's an important issue. It's one that will continue to follow. Thank you very much for your insight. Thanks, Jim. All right. Up next, a new feature for Facing South Florida. Who said what where when we come back?